Uh, so let's go ahead and begin. We have one hour uh, on this session. If you have questions as we go, you know, just let me know as trying to do conversational, uh, you know, help here as we go. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is get through an initial part of the presentation um, that lays some of the foundation for some of the software you have available to, and then do a, a demonstration um, and uh, follow that up with resources that are available to you after this session so we can continue learning and exploring ways that this might help you in your uh, research or uh, in your learning. So my name is Bruce Godfrey. I'm a GIS librarian here at the University of Idaho. And we're gonna be talking about web mapping and uh, primarily ArcGIS Online. Um, so let's go ahead and... So we have a page on the University of Idaho Library's website about selecting GIS software. And there's a variety of tools you, you can use. So from the feedback, we have some folks who don't have any GIS experience. We have some folks who are using Esri products uh, at this time. There are a number of open source tools that are available out there um, on the library's webpage. We have a link to the few, a few of those that are out there and some other resources to help you kind of sort through open source tools in addition to any web searches you might do. If you're looking for a desktop GIS, arguably the most popular open source tool is probably QGIS. There's other out, out there that are available, but if you're a Mac user, for example, QGIS will install on a Mac or Linux. Um, and uh, so I encourage you to take a look at some of uh, the options if you want to take a look at open source GIS tools and uh, explore those because they're certainly uh, can be used in, in the research uh, or the learning you do for geographic information systems. Now, at the University of Idaho, we're afforded access to uh, the vast majority of products made by ESRI that they make available. And we fall under a higher education site license with them. So the university provides uh, access to these tools for re teaching and research, uh, just not for commercial use. Um, we just, weren't, that's not permitted under our license, but uh, you have access to uh, a wide variety of ESRI tools. And some of the ones we'll talk about today, in addition to maybe some that you've used like ArcGIS Pro or their desktop software. So again, that information is available on the University of Idaho Library uh, webpage if you look for geospatial resources. One of the primary ones we'll focus on today is ArcGIS Online, like was mentioned in the title. Uh, it's really where Esri's moved in, in recent years, um, and it's a web-based platform um, that enables uh, folks to share and manage and create uh, data sets in an online environment. And we have access to that through our Vandal Net ID. Uh, students can sign in using single sign-on, um, similar to the folks who have used Pro, the same way you sign in to ArcGIS Pro. So kind of setting the stage, um, you know, in past years, the desktop software was really the focus of GIS where a lot of action took place. And that's really transitioned to ArcGIS Online being uh, more the center of the wheel and all the applications being spokes on that wheel, if you want to think of it in that metaphor. But maybe on the analysis side, you know, that might be where Arc Pro really, really falls into this diagram. But there's apps for mobile data collection, and there's apps for web mapping, and there's applications for sharing information and discussing your research with others. So um, those really all flow in and out of ArcGIS Online. So having a clear understanding of, of how that functions is what we're going to focus on today and will be helpful, I think, um, as you consider, you know, a web-centric GIS or, or modern GIS as Esri Systems is our focus now. So ArcGIS Online is this cloud-based platform, right? It's collaborative and, and we can create and manage and, and share data out there. There's a public-facing portion of it. If you go to arcgis.com, you can just browse anonymously. You don't have to sign in. You can look at data sets people have shared publicly and, and use it in that fashion. Um, but we have access to a teaching and scholar, 
scholarly research portal at uidaho.maps.arcgis.com. And that um, affords us access to a lot more functionality than just the public facing version, right? We have a lot more uh, uh, access out there through uidaho.maps.arcgis.com. So if you go to that website, if you sign in, there's a big blue button, use your Vandal Net ID, and you sign in that way, and we'll explore that today uh, as we get through this session. Um, one mention, those items that are out there, we don't back up. They're on Esri's platform like other cloud-based platforms. So just be aware of that. You can enable delete protection on items out there. Um, you can also download items from there, but it's not uh, content that's sitting on servers here managed by the University of Idaho. Again, it's a cloud-based platform. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the different apps. I'll kind of categorize into different categories that will give you an overview of all these other products that are out there available for your research and learning. Um, and, uh, you know, for the folks who are using Pro, we'll talk about that. But for the folks who maybe don't need to get too in depth, maybe you just need some of these apps. So if you're looking to do mobile data collection on the Esri platform, they have three primary apps right now. Uh, Field Maps is really a map-centered focused application for mobile data collection. This picture is actually from my phone where I've collected some points out there. Um, and you install it on your Android or Apple device, and you can collect data out in the field. You can either be out of network range or in network range. Um, so it has offline collection capabilities, and you collect data that way. It's synced up to ArcGIS Online. The data are stored in ArcGIS Online. Survey123 is more of a form-centric approach, much like you would see a Qualtrics form. You can include a map in it, but uh, you have the ability to have it uh, be more uh, narrative-based and, and less map-based, if that's advantageous. And then they have a small app called Quick Capture. Um, which is really about taking quick observations, take a photo, uh, not as much functionality as the other ones, but maybe very appropriate for uh, something you might be doing in the field. And, and these you install on mobile device and uh, can collect data and it communicates with ArcGIS online and stores the data up there. So those are the three mobile data collection apps that are available to you. Uh, if we're looking at web mapping, uh, they have two out there that are popular, Scene Viewer and Map Viewer, which are accessed through the web browser. So when you sign in to uidaho.maps.arcgis.com, across the top, you'll see Scene and Map, and you can use those much like you would, you know, like Google Earth or Google Maps type interface. Um, so again, this is operating system independent if you're on a Mac. Uh, or something like that. Uh, these just require web browser access to create 2D maps and 3D maps. So you could collect data in the field and look at it here in your web mapping application and not have to install a desktop GIS. So on the analysis side, uh, ArcGIS Pro, their current desktop application, their most powerful application, um, you know, if, if you're going to be doing a lot of analysis and processing, ArcGIS Pro is probably an application you're going to get to know if you're going to use the Esri platform. And some of you, um, based on our responses to the survey, are using that and taking advantage of it. Um, and it is another app in, you know, the Esri uh, environment that's tied directly to ArcGIS Pro. So we can push data, or excuse me, tied to ArcGIS Online. So the same way we can push data from a mobile app to ArcGIS Online, we can push data from ArcGIS Pro to ArcGIS Online, and we can consume data from ArcGIS Online. Other popular ones, City Engine, 3D design software. We just got access to an app called Drone to Map within the last uh, about month, about the last two months. So if you're doing any drone work, that might be something you take a look at. Uh, ArcGIS Maps for Office is an Excel add-in. So if you like working in Excel and you have some data that's just latitude, longitude, and you want to make a map in Excel, uh, that's available. Insights is a web-based application uh, that's a lot like Qualtrics, if you're familiar with that, for doing analytics on a lot of data. 
Notebooks are also available if you're if you're on a Python person or that type of thing. If you've used Jupyter notebooks, um, that's available um, out there as well. And I mentioned at the bottom, some of these come with installations, and some of them are browser based. Um, you know, like ArcGIS Pro, you're going to install on a Windows based machine. Uh, notebooks is within ArcGIS Pro. So uh, you can access it that way. Our notebooks are within uh, ArcGIS Online that you can just create in the web browser. So you don't necessarily have to have, uh, you can get to notebooks multiple ways. Um, and it doesn't necessarily require an installation. Uh, other ones, business analyst, if you're doing market analysis or site selection, community analyst, geoplanner is another one. And ArcGIS Urban uh, is out there and available. And when you get these slides, all these are hyperlinked to the product page. Uh, you can explore that more. There are resource lists on almost every product page to um, you know, find out more about uh, getting familiar with that product that's available out there. Okay, those are all the analysis apps. Um, apps for really discussing your research or conveying information. Uh, story maps are one of Esri's most popular maps that allows you to combine digital content like audio, video, text, uh, maps into one story and lay that out and uh, communicate with folks. Dashboards are very popular where you can read in real time information and have it update and have little meters on it and that kind of thing. Uh, ArcGIS Hub, um, if you're doing a community engagement initiative, can be helpful. Then there are instant apps um, where you can just choose templates, no programming required. You make a map, you wrap it in a little application, and put a title on it, and put some context around what's happening in the map. Um, those are available. Another one called Experience Builder is similar to that. And Web App Builder is also out there. So you have the ability to create little applications that contain a web map and contain information to uh, convey that to the public or you know, others within a class or on a research project, uh, that type of thing. So uh, these are all out there and available um, and, uh, and are uh, ready for use. Uh, if you are into app development on Esri's platform, there's App Studio if you want to develop an application for mobile devices, or their application programming interfaces and software development kits are also uh, available if you look at their developer options. So if you have an inkling for that um, on the Esri platform, uh, you could definitely take a look at these. So we'll talk a little bit about just sharing content. You know, if, if you're in the uh, desktop world, right, all everything's on your machine and you log in and you have access to it. And that begins to change a little bit when we go to a web-centric or more modern GIS, as, as Esri likes to call it. But um, a couple of examples real quick, um, just to reiterate uh, what we talked about uh, just a few moments ago that with an application like Field Map, I can go out with my phone, I can collect data. Those data are synchronized up and stored in ArcGIS Online. And then I could access those from ArcGIS Pro. If I did that collection um, and those data sit out there on the web, then I can get to them from ArcGIS Pro, right? And we'll demo how to do that here, uh, just to access data from ArcGIS Online um, from ArcGIS Pro. We can also create a map in Pro and we could share that web map to ArcGIS Online, right? And then we could use an in-story map or in some other way um, to uh, share that information with others. So there's a lot of different combinations we can have between all these apps where we might collect data or produce data. You know, ArcGIS Online, um, where we store those data potentially, and then use them in other applications that are available across the system. So um, you can share content, um, you know, through the portal with uh, all those apps that, that we're talking about. And again, in this scenario, ArcGIS Pro is seen as an app, you know, on the system now. It's just a very powerful app. 
um, but it's by no means the only app available to you as, as students. There's a lot of choices out there. Okay, now sharing content with others. Let's talk about this for a little bit. When you push something up to ArcGIS Online, you're the only one who can see it by default. And you have to choose to make it more broadly available. And on the ArcGIS Online platform, the next level of sharing is among a group. Currently, ArcGIS Online doesn't have the ability to share a single item with someone like you would in, say, Google Drive or something at this point, or OneDrive. You have to create a group and add members to that group and share those items with the members of a group. So that's the next level at this point. You can create a group in ArcGIS Online and invite everyone from your research project or your class to be a member of that group. And then the items you share with that group, they could see, or potentially, depending on the parameters you set for that group, they could share, do shared updates on that. Multiple editors could be, say, editing a vector data set in ArcGIS Online. Um, note that we can share um, after the group level at the organization level, like the library, we share data with the University of Idaho uh, library, some licensed aerial imagery, for example, for research areas. And we can't share it publicly, but we can share it uh, at members of the institution. So beyond the group level, you can share it with everybody who's a member of ArcGIS Online with a VandalNet ID who's signed in to ArcGIS Online. And lastly, you can share it publicly, anonymous access, Somebody can go there just like a web page and look at it. And uh, you have that highest level of sharing, if you will, uh, with the public. So you can also share across other organizations on ArcGIS Online. Like say you're working with Department of Water Resources or somebody at Idaho Department of Lands and you want them to take a look at the map you've done. If their accounts are enabled to invite you, if their organization allows it, they could be in a group with you and and uh, uh, you could you know, securely share some item for them to take a look at. Uh, right now, shared updates is only available within members of the same organization. So uh, right now, uh, it would have to be folks with a VandalNet ID if they were going to uh, do shared updates on an item in ArcGIS Online. So that's how we share content with others in ArcGIS Online. Again, everything's private by default and you have to specifically share it with others um, at either the group level, organization level, or publicly uh, based on, on what you're seeking to do there. So let's take a look at this. Um, that lays the, the groundwork. I wanna pause there just for a second before we go into ArcGIS Online and, and take a look at uh, some of this functionality we mentioned. Is there anything in the slides we've covered so far that uh, folks have a question about either online or here in the room? Very good, okay. So let's take a look at, uh, go ahead and sign in to ArcGIS Online using the web browser. Uh, if you go to uidaho.maps.arcgis.com, like I've done over here, and if when you sign in, there should be a big blue button that says use your Vandal Net ID, and you can use single sign-on. Uh, uh, just like you do with other uh, apps at the university. And you should come to a, uh, get this out of the way, you should come to a uh, screen that looks just like this. Uh, is everybody online able to sign in? And folks here in the, uh, I'll give you just a minute to sign in and, and we'll uh, walk through this together. If anyone's having trouble online, uh, if you could respond in the chat, just let us know and, and uh, we'll try to address the issue. Yeah, confirmation that at least one person was able to log in. Okay, great. How about in the room here? Have you guys had success? Yeah, 
Very good. Yes, that's good. You'll probably come to the home page. I'm on the wrong tab, but uh, you'll probably come to a screen that looks like this. Yep. Two people. Two people. Okay. Uh, that's great. Thank you for the feedback online. Um, and uh, let's just take a look at uh, the interface here for ArcGIS Online. Uh, and we'll start over on uh, the home tab here. Uh, you can scroll down, you can see some of the data we share uh, that's available in the gallery that's listed here. It's just a lot of managed content from the library uh, that we've made accessible out there that you can search and uh, take a look at and filter by different item types. So uh, you have the ability to explore that gallery. Uh, let's jump over to the organization tab. Uh, this will give you some information about right now I'm listed as the administrative contact there. So you can also always get in touch with me about any of this. It lists new members who have joined, uh, some groups that are available out there and new content that's been shared with the organization, at least at the organization level, it shows up here. Um, these look like a lot of public data sets that some folks are working on um, that they've made available. Um, so uh, you can see a list of all members. If you want to invite somebody to your group, make sure they've signed in from across the institution. You can see that. So where you'll end up spending a lot of time is probably let's go to the content tab and uh, briefly take a look at where you'll end up managed content on ArcGIS Online if you're, if you're gonna uh, take advantage of this platform. So within this, you have the ability to create folders to organize content. Like we could create a new folder uh, that might store workshop demo. Um, and you could do these for classes or research projects, that kind of thing. So we can store items in this in these folders that we create. Right now, there's only one level of hierarchy here. So we can't do subfolders at this time in ArcGIS Online. So when you're organizing your data, uh, be aware of that at this point. It's a single level uh, that's in here. So right now, as this demo user, I don't have any content that's in here. Um, and uh, we could begin by uploading data like a shapefile in here. We could publish data from ArcGIS Pro. Uh, we could create a new item in here like a map, which is what we'll do and share it and you'll see it show up in our content. So as you gain content, it'll all be accessible here um, that you own and then you have some options for, for how you management, manage it. You can also see contact content from all the groups that you're participating in or the organization or Esri's Living Atlas, which is a set of curated data products that they make available with partners out there. So if you're looking for data sets, which we'll do here today, that have undergone uh, some scrutiny before they've been published, uh, this is a good place to look for a lot of federal uh, data sets, US uh, data sets that Esri's made available with their partners. So you can certainly take a look there. So we've created a folder. We'll start creating some content shortly. If you go to the groups tab, you have the ability here to create groups and invite members. So on the create groups button, uh, you'll give it a name like workshop group. Uh, you'll want to give it a summary so that uh, if you're going to share it, you know, you want to provide some documentation about what this group would uh, contain. Add tags if you're going to be searching for items. And once you get a lot of content, that can be helpful really to filter it out. And then you have a lot of parameters you can set on the group. Uh, who's going to be able to view this group, right? It's just going to be me or is it going to be available to the public? Um, who can be in this group? Um, and how can people join? Do you send them an invitation or a link or could they do it by request? And who can contribute content? And then shared updates down here is a uh, parameter you have to set if you want some members of that uh, group to be able to edit content that you place in there or others place in there. So if you want to collaborate, you could do that here. So once you create a group in here, you'll see that item show up in ArcGIS Online. 
and we can further manage uh, items that we get in here and we can go over to the members tab and we can invite members from across our organization to participate in this group uh, or from other organizations if they've set up their profile to allow that. So um, you can come in here and add descriptions and uh, other information in here. Um, you have the ability to get back to the settings and adjust those settings um, once you create the group. So now we have a group created and we've looked at our content. Here's our group. We've shared nothing with it, um, but it's out there and available. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of these other tabs. The notebook tab is available here. So if you uh, want to create notebooks to process and, and analyze data, you can certainly do that. We won't do that in this workshop. Uh, it's a little uh, beyond what we're going to cover. And then the two other tabs are those web mapping applications uh, that we talked about. Scene Viewer is the 3D version, uh, very similar to Google Earth. And Map Viewer is the application uh, that's their primary two-dimensional 2D web mapping application. So if we open that up, we get a base map in there. And our uh, interface here uh, is available to us to begin making a new web map. Um, and we can go in uh, and add content here. So for example, uh, if we want to search for layers that are out there, I guess I should mention one other thing here. Esri's in a transition between two map viewers. This one that opened here is called Classic. There's also one just called Map Viewer now, which is uh, the one they're promoting although not every piece of functionality in Classic is available in Map Viewer, So you can switch between the two on the vast majority of web maps you'll make, but there is some functionality that uh, uh, isn't be able, it's not be able to go between the two. So um, starting in Map Viewer is probably a good idea unless you want to do analysis in Classic on the web this piece of functionality here, if you want to buffer on the web or something like that. Uh, classic might be uh, advantageous. If not, Map Viewer is probably going to be, uh, it's their newer version as they phase out Classic, which is their legacy one. So you can see the interfaces are slightly different uh, between the two. Um, so we get a map. We can change the base map on this if we want. You know, we can put imagery in the background. And we can add layers uh, here. Right now, I don't have any content in here, but if I did, we could add that content. Um, we could add it from groups or from the organization um, or from all of ArcGIS Online or from the Living Atlas, which I'll give you an example of the Living Atlas. If we're looking for something like, a, how about USA counties? Uh, we can just add this uh, data set here by clicking this button. So from the Living Atlas, there, we're adding this piece of content uh, to our web map. And we'll get that to show up over here. And it'll flood in uh, here. So we get counties of uh, the United States. And even though it's a really ugly web map, uh, we have it here. You can identify on this much like the desktop application that you can do. And a lot of the similar basic GIS functionality uh, you have available here, right? We can turn off the visibility and turn on the visibility and we could change transparency of the layer um, and we could do labeling. And on this type of service, we could filter out you know, uh, all the counties except, say, Idaho's counties and that type of thing. Uh, so there's a there's a good bit of functionality over here, filtering again over here. Um, we can do labeling. A lot of the basic things that you can do, the basic things in a desktop GIS where you can make a map, you can do in the web map uh, as well. So we just have one layer in here, and we can save this web map, right? We have uh, one layer in here, 
and we can create a new web map that will show up in our content. So if I say uh, workshop map, and I'm going to save it in the workshop demo folder. And I'll go ahead and leave tags and summary blank for uh, the workshop here, but I encourage you to put those in for your content as you create them. And we will save this web map um, in our folder over under our content. And we have our first item in ArcGIS Online. So here's our web map, right? Um, it's only available to us as indicated by uh, this little icon that looks like an individual. So the sharing levels owner. And if you share it differently, that will change. You know, it looks like a globe if you share it uh, with everyone. Uh, it looks like a small building if you share it with the institution and that type of thing. So we've successfully created one item in ArcGIS Online called a web map. Um, that has the counties of the United States in there. Um, now, we can go to that item and we can add more detail, uh, a better title. Uh, we could add a better brief summary in here and a description. Uh, we could put terms of use on this. Um, you might want to use uh, something formal in there about how someone would use it. Uh, so you could put credits on who created it, that type of thing. Uh, we have the ability to open this up, this web map we can open uh, from the browser here in ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap still, you could do it if we wanted to open it right from here. Um, you can see you can open it in other applications. We could also share it from right here with other groups. Um, so if we wanted to share it, with everyone in the organization, we could do that. We could share it with public, or we could share it with a group down here. If we had our group defined, we could share it with that demo group. Uh, you do have the ability to see usage statistics on these. Like if you put it out there and see how often somebody's, uh, see how often people are accessing it, you'll get total counts for uh, by day for uh, uh, folks viewing it. And then you have some settings over here. Uh, so you can enable delete protection here, which simply means that on that other page, if you try to delete it, it's going to say it can't. You actually have to come back in here and uncheck delete protection to make sure you really, really want to delete it. Um, and then uh, with web maps or different types of items, there's different options that you can set. You can allow others to make a copy of it or not. Uh, you know, you can use it in different applications. Uh, so there are various settings for each type of uh, item that's available in ArcGIS Online. So we created that one web map here. And let's take a look um, at accessing this content now from ArcGIS Pro. Since a number of people have used ArcGIS Pro, um, we'll go ahead and create a web map down there and do something similar where we push it up to ArcGIS Online or we can consume this data set down there, this web map down there. So if you have ArcGIS Pro on your machine, uh, Go ahead and open that for the folks that have. Um, for the folks that haven't used ArcGIS Pro, we'll give you a glimpse into that um, as uh, a desktop GIS if, uh, if that's something you think you'll need to use in the future or not. Certainly, depending on the level of GIS you're doing, you don't necessarily have to use ArcGIS Pro. Again, it's just their most advanced application. And uh, it's uh, one example here where we can search those items in the portal and see what's available, just like other apps. So it'll serve them as an example. So I have a map available showing here in ArcGIS Pro. When you sign into ArcGIS Pro, you enter your VandalNet ID. And for a lot of us over the years, you're looking in your project folder to see what data sets you, know, you have available locally on this machine, right? 
But one of the differences here as we transition to this web-centric approach is we can get to all that content that's available through ArcGIS Online. We can get to it from this application, this client application. So where we do that in ArcGIS Pro, and it's a little different in different apps, but here we go to our portal um, that's under our catalog tab. And it's gonna show me my content that, I'm gonna slide this over here. It's going to show the content that I have available, just like we see in the web browser, right? So I have one folder in there called workshop demo that I created. And I have one item in there, the workshop map. So the same way we can see the content right here, workshop demo, workshop map, we can see it from ArcGIS Pro down here. And we have the ability to look at our groups, right? That we have available out there. Um, there's no content in my group right now, so it's not going to show up, but there's the group if I want to see it. Um, I have one called workshop group. I just don't have any items in there right now. We can look at all the content that the organization uh, has shared out there and we can search it. Uh, there's a lot out here that students and faculty and others are creating um, and it's, it's shared at the organization level. Uh, something, for example, like the library shares at the organization might be like uh, uh, about uh, Taylor Ranch imagery. So here uh, you can see these are shared by the University of Idaho Library listed as the owner. You can get more information. We can add this piece of content right to the map if we want to uh, drag it over here on the map and look at that data set we've shared. We can also search all of ArcGIS online, or we can search the Living Atlas, uh, just like we did in the web browser. We can grab those USA counties over here, right? So we could add this data set uh, to the web map, and they flood in. So just like we can do it through the web browser, uh, we can do it through the desktop application. So we can get to all that content uh, in different ways. I'll go ahead and remove that item. And then show you that we can push data up to ArcGIS Online from here. We'll, we'll have one example of that, just so you see it work in both ways. We can consume it in this application, like we can with all those other apps, like we talked about, like Story Maps or others, or we can also send data up there from ArcGIS Pro. So up along the top of the the ArcGIS Pro window, there is a share uh, option that you'll see and become familiar with if you start integrating ArcGIS online as a place to store and manage data or products. Um, and we can take this uh, data set and we can share it as a web map. So we can push this up to ArcGIS online here. And it'll open a geoprocessing tool to share as a web map. And we could say, uh, Workshop ArcGIS Pro Map. Uh, again, we want to fill these out. Um, there's a couple of options on how we share it, which you'll want to uh, begin to take a look at. We can put it in our workshop demo folder. And here you could choose how you want to share it, or we can just push it up there privately so only we can see it. And uh, We'll go ahead and share that item, and it's going to push it up to ArcGIS Online here, uh, hopefully pretty quickly. Going to analyze it first, see if we get any errors or alerts, see what they show. And since this is a small data set, uh, it should go pretty quickly. So it's going to publish this layer um, and send it up to ArcGIS Online. You can actually. Uh, if you have a desire to, you can share an entire ArcGIS Pro project and store it in ArcGIS Online as if you wanted to like back it up that way, or if you had everything bundled up and you wanted to share your project with somebody else, uh, you could do the, the entire project um, and, and share it that way through ArcGIS Online. So while that's working, I'm going to see if it's uh, showing up over here yet. Uh, we're going to put it here. 
So it started anyway, it started to publish a layer, that layer that we had in there. Let's see if it's finished yet. Still working, uh, uploading the items here. And fit, okay, so it did successfully finish there, um, publishing this map. And the way we published it, this becomes a layer in ArcGIS Online, right? So we have that layer that we could use in other applications or um, in other maps. So if we go back over here, just refresh real quick. So we have a map we created in ArcGIS Online called the web map. We have another uh, one we created in Pro and it's a web map. And then that layer is stored as a feature layer, much like a feature class in a geodatabase um, that you could use uh, to make other maps and, and uh, uh, use in ArcGIS Online. So then we get this map that we made in ArcGIS Pro that we shared with ArcGIS Online. And then you could share it beyond that. So if we look at this, open it up in Map Viewer, we should see all our, those are just an example of weather stations out there. Uh, and there they are. So it's accessing these data from that feature layer in ArcGIS Online. So this is no longer on our desktop. Um, it's stored in ArcGIS Online, right? And we can go over here and see it uh, as a different icon. It's an actual feature layer that we can add back from ArcGIS Online or others could add from ArcGIS Online. And we could edit that here and show those changes up on the web. It's actually a, uh, a data set that's stored in ArcGIS Online right now. So. You don't necessarily have to store your data in the desktop environment. Um, you can take advantage of ArcGIS Online if it's beneficial to have those data available to a number of different apps out there and think about how you want to manage it, where you want to edit the content. You can certainly edit it on the desktop and push it up there, or you can just edit the data set that's out there uh, in ArcGIS Online. Okay. Is that helpful for everyone to kind of see how one app interacts with data sets in ArcGIS Online and how you could share data back and forth um, and uh, really explore that sharing tab uh, on, on how you might be interested in, you know, thinking about data management and your needs for projects or coursework um, and where you ultimately want those data to reside. Yes. I do have one question from uh, Zoom, which was earlier on when it was with groups um, on, on RPIS online. Um, Madison said they don't see an add group button on their screen and ask if that's because they don't have any content to be there. A create group button? Uh, they should. Uh, no, they should see something to create a group even with no content. Are they signed in with their Vandal Net ID? Okay, so even though you don't have any content, you should still be able to create a group. Does everyone in here have a create group button? Yeah, you do. Okay, um, it's possible. Uh, make sure when you sign in, um, let me sign out for just a second and uh, uh, show you the login screen. When you sign in to ArcGIS Online. Uh, you want to click this button. You don't want to click uh, ArcGIS login. You want to click this button with your Vandal Net ID. Um, and you should see a, a create group button that's available. Under the, under the group menu. Under the group, under the group heading, yes. Yeah, so they said they see it now, but they have something. Okay, okay, great. Okay, glad that we got that uh, worked out. Okay. So let me uh, stop there, and I want to spend like the last 10 minutes or so here um, just talking about now that we've taken a look at this, and there's a lot of information and a lot of apps out there um, and a lot to consider if you want to use uh, Esri products in your research, research or your learning. Um, I just want to spend a little time talking about resources now that are available uh, to you after this class that we can follow up and uh, it, uh, hopefully those will be helpful. 
Um, so that was a brief demo of the capabilities of ArcGIS Online. Again, there's a lot more out there, but I wanted you to be able to get in there and uh, you know get a glimpse at the interface and understand what's available and how it interacts with other apps uh, available on the system. So let me talk a little bit about support. Uh, so from the library, I'm certainly always available. I'm a GIS librarian. Part of my job is to answer questions and help students and help faculty uh, navigate this software and other GIS software um, and, and questions around that. Also, uh, on the first floor down here, for those folks in this room, on the first floor of the library, we've opened up a uh, library resource called the Data Hub. Um, which is in the map room. Uh, it used to be all just physical maps. Now half of it's transitioned over to kind of digital environment and half is still physical, physical maps. But uh, we have folks available. Um, if you, uh, you know, walk in, um, want to talk about uh, GIS and that type of thing or questions or problems you're having, first floor of the library over in the northwest corner, room 107. We are staffed with a librarian from 11 to 3, Monday through Friday. Um, we're available there in person. Uh, you can certainly reach us by phone uh, or uh, either remotely. There's a If you go to the uh, Data Hub webpage, there's a little chat icon. We're available on chat if you're stuck, or we could set up a Zoom and, and help remotely. So uh, that space uh, is... Uh, uh, set up with some collaborative computer areas. If you want to work with someone, sit around the couch, look at a screen, work through problems, uh, talk to one of the librarians. Uh, there's tables there. There's some workstations if you want to try out different software, that type of thing. Uh, there's also a fellowship available for graduate students uh, that uh, we just uh, established. Um, there's a link on here to apply for that. And again, this is recent. It's only been open for a few weeks. Uh, so we're interested in uh, supporting students and supporting faculty um, around GIS and data management and uh, uh, that type of thing. So I want to make sure uh, everyone knows that after this workshop, uh, we don't disappear. We're out there. So, so come let us know if you need help uh, on the first floor of the library or remotely. Um, additionally, if we can't figure it out and it's an Esri technical question and we're all stuck, we have access to Esri technical support through our higher ed site license. So we've banged our head against the wall long enough and, and let's get them involved. So um, on your behalf, I can contact Esri support. Not all of us, everybody at the institution can't just contact them. It has to be a uh, uh, certain person. Um, but if you have a question, let me know you're stuck. We contact tech support. They contact you back with someone from their uh, team that's knowledgeable about the piece of software you're using, technical difficulties, or that type of thing, uh, workflows that you might be having. So we can take advantage of Esri Tech support for questions that we can't figure out. Yes. We have two related questions um, from Deja. I hope I'm saying that right, and Ariana. Okay. Uh, Deja asks. Uh, will our UI ArcGIS online access remain active over the summer between spring and fall semesters if we're not enrolled for summer semester? I worry about losing data in the future. Uh, then Ariana asks, will we have access to maps or data we've used in the past using our student account once we are no longer a student? Okay, so two questions uh, there, just to make sure everyone heard online about uh, content that's in ArcGIS online after you leave the institution or in between semesters, uh, that type of thing. So as long as you have a VandalNet ID, you'll have access to that content, uh, you know, through the summer, that type of thing, if you're an active student. So uh, as long as you have a VandalNet ID, you can get into your account. So whatever ITS policies have, uh, those will follow there. Uh, we don't disable accounts or delete data uh, for anyone who's been on the system at this point. Um, the account just sits there. It's just a matter of whether or not you can get in through single sign-on. Um, if you know you're going to be leaving, there's certainly, uh, you know, like where we saw that feature layer out there, you could download it as a shapefile or a geodatabase if you want to take it with you. Um, there are ways to change ownership of content by administrators. Um, 
depending on what you create, it might not be as easy with a public account because public accounts are pretty restricted. Like maybe your data set's too big or uh, that type of thing. So um, it, it will sit out there and you have access to as long as you have a net ID and we don't delete it. Um, but if you're going to be leaving, we probably want to discuss ways to make sure that content can follow you. Um, even if we, you know, take those layers and, and download them and you take them on a thumb drive or some other mechanism. But uh, yeah, it's going to follow your VandalNet ID for access. Yes. I want to ask, um, on RGS Online, the content that you're creating, um, do they only, I mean, uh, is there any exercise or like, like after finishing a chapter in the book, that we get seen through exercises. So in RJS Online, is there any, anything like that available to the new like, practice? And yeah. Let me, let me show you here. So the question is about uh, learning resources for RJS Online. Uh, after this. And let's take a look at a couple of these next slides. Uh, if you go to one of their mapping products here, like say you go to field maps and we click on that link and go to that web page, almost all of them have a resources tab. And if we were to look at one of these, uh, could, whoops, I'm on the wrong uh, mouse there. If we were to look at ArcGIS online here, uh, let's take a look at the product page. And we're on the resources page here. And, you know, they give you some uh, learning paths and tips and tricks for using it. And they have blogs available um, about uh, trying different things. Documentation, if you're looking for specific, uh, you know, uh, about how to create content or analyze data. So those are a good place to start. They have a number of videos, and this would be for field maps or you know any of the applications that are out there. That's one level of, uh, of uh, resources that are available. In addition to that, I would point out that as part of our uh, site license, you have access to Esri training modules um, through esri.com training. These are self-paced online exercises that you have available to you as a student and are certainly, um, you know, consider taking advantage of. So if you go to esri.com training and you sign in with your University of Idaho Vandal Net ID, we have access to the vast majority of stuff in their catalog with the exception of the one I've highlighted here called uh, Courses by Location. These are ones they have done at their training centers. Like you go to Olympia and pay, you know, a significant sum to sit with an instructor and, and learn. But if you go into the course catalog, you can search the course catalog, say for, you know, field maps or that type of thing. And you can browse by uh, different topics. If you want to do deep learning on imagery in ArcGIS Pro, you know, they have lesson plans out there for that type of thing or resources out there for that. Maybe there's a free video. Um, some of these things, you know, are available for free, but others we get under our maintenance contract. And taking a look at Esri.com training is a really valuable resource um, for uh, learning specifics about some of these, these apps. Um, additionally, uh, other learning opportunities around GIS, GIS Day is coming up November 16th, next month. I'll be down in the Clearwater Room and online. We have several speakers who are uh, going to be talking about geo privacy. And then uh, yesterday, the call for presentations opened up. If you have something you'd like to share in a short 10 minute short talk, uh, that's uh, up and you'll start to see, I think, advertisements across the university for that very shortly. Um, so that's another one. If you want to meet others, uh, get a look at what's going out there uh, around GIS, in this case, geo privacy. Um, the short talks cover a variety of topics from students and faculty who are, are taking advantage of GIS. Uh, so I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, this is the last Graduate Student Essentials Workshop. Um, the library folks have, have worked hard to put this together. Uh, so uh, we are very thankful for everyone who's attended online and in person. 
and hopefully these have been uh, uh, have been really helpful. Um, are there any other questions related to uh, the ArcGIS online platform or any of the Esri software or all these resources that we have access to? Uh, uh, you know, after this class, um, and if something comes up and you just need to, you know, have a question, just certainly email me, bgodfrey at uidaho.edu or stop by the data hub or, or get in touch with us and, and uh, I'll sit down and, and discuss. Um, are there any other questions? On, oh, there's one, one in the room. I want to ask, uh, is there any other things that we can do with RGS online other than mapping? Other than uh, mapping on creating the internet? Yeah, yeah. Other than that, I uh well there's a so you could collect data through any field maps you could do data collection uh you could create uh any other we could create a little web application that that surrounded that map and provided context we could create a dashboard or a story map um, that had a map in it uh uh any of those applications that you can do analysis certainly on the platform if you wanted using things like Geo planner or that type of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, the functionality of those apps will kind of drive, you know, uh, what you can do out there. Another question I had. So yes. Um, I wanted to know if uh, after I I am done with my degree, I'm no longer a student. Yeah. Right now. So with my Venn ID, can I still work on uh, RGS online? I mean, like you're putting the right at home. OK, so the question is about, for those online, it's about access to content after you're no longer a student. Not actually or, access. Also, like working, sharing maps, or you know, like the things that I do right now. So the options would be um, you could get a public account, uh, which would have less functionality than organizational accounts. If you go to an organization that has ArcGIS uh, online, you'd have access to that organization, um, depending on their level of licensing of what you could do. Um, but you wouldn't be able to sign in with your net ID uh, once uh, ITS, you know, uh, uh, you know, shut that down. So um, yeah, you're afforded a lot of access as a student under our higher education site license certainly take advantage of it but it is you know that's kind of going back to the open source work proprietary too at some point um you have access to it while you're a student if you go to an organization that has it you'll have access there are public accounts um, that are available um and uh you'd have to explore those options um once you're a student yeah kind of along that line if it's a collaborative project do our PIs have our, our advisors or, or PIs have the same access that students do? Like it's sort of rooted in their account. If you uh are PI, uh, they, they employees of the University of Idaho. Yes. So they can sign in the same way we do with our Vandal Net ID. And they would only have access to see your data if you shared it directly with them. If you created a group and invited your advisor. Or if they created a group and said, please share it with me. Yes. So the question was about uh, student or faculty and advisors having access to items you create in ArcGIS online. And as long as they, they're banned on that ID and they sign in, then you could share content with them. Yes. OK. Um, we're a minute over, so I'm going to stop there and respect everyone's time there. Um, for those in the room, if you're willing to share or fill out one of our feedback forms here, we have paper copies. For those online, I believe they'll see a link or did just receive a link um, if you're willing to provide us some feedback. And I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to reach out to me with additional questions. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of apps and software out there under Esri's platform or on the open source side to start learning and taking advantage of GIS. And uh, hopefully it'll be beneficial in your research and uh, your, your schoolwork. So thank you. Thank you.